So what is Minecraft Frontiers? Minecraft Frontiers is a role-playing experience where a lot of people can come together and shape the environment around them in meaningful ways. It's all about the interactions between different people. So you as a warrior might interact with crafters or politicians to actually achieve much bigger goals and your own personal story would have impact on the experience of others. So we kind of see it as an interactive universe where individuals have really really fun stories but the main goal is actually experiencing the whole thing together with others by your side. MF has actually been in development for the past five years and for you to understand the main features of the project it's crucial to understand the history of RPGs as a whole. So let me give you a really really quick overview of the main games out there and what kinds of projects we use to actually drive our inspirations for Minecraft Frontiers. Dungeons and Dragons is actually becoming quite popular lately because of Strange of Hanks, but it goes back to the 70s. So the idea behind Dungeons and Dragons is that different people can come together and invent their own unique stories. So you have a really, really super rough guideline and you put people into the mix and it's actually the people who come up with the most interesting stories and interactions. So it's a small game where you can come together with other friends and you can experience this huge fantasy journey together um, and be part of the whole story, right? And the story can happen overnight or it can happen over many, many weeks. So it's as flexible as you want it to be, but in the end it's this journey and this story that you share with other people. So this has been kind of the foundation of RPGs back in, all the way in the 70s, right? So as computers started to develop and games started to be more intricate and internet was kind of becoming a thing, um, people started to think about moving the D&D experience into a visual computer form. And in 1997 they released a game called Ultima Online, which was supposedly supposed to be a D&D experience kind of encapsulated online with other people as part of a game. So their main kind of point was that you could have this adventure and you could go out and not really be forced into a specific path but instead have basically a playground in front of you that you can play with and do whatever you want with right so their main idea was let's build this world for people and let's invite people into the world and see what they do with it we don't want to give them a set journey we don't want to give them a really narrow path but instead let's add more and more kind of tools and the tools are there for the player to actually decide what they want to do and how they want to enjoy the whole experience with others. Um, so they had some combat and they also had some crafting but they also had some housing ownership and the idea was to kind of try to simulate the whole experience of what it would be like to be in that world not just a small section of it. So let's actually get people in and let's give them a lot of stuff to do that they could do over weeks and months and actually tens of years right into the future. So that was kind of the main foundation of uh, Ultima Online and what they tried to do with that game. The other big inspiration for MF is a game called Star Wars Galaxies. And that's a game that came out in response to a game called EverQuest. And EverQuest at the time was kind of taking the D&D &D experience and really focusing on the personalized journey I guess. Um, so they would have kind of tightly selected classes and they would have a list of skills that a player could use and they would kind of take that whole vision of having a player be a specific class and having a journey set out for them that they, they would have to embark on and kind of progress through their journey that's been laid out. And when Star Wars Galaxies came out they really tried to kind of reinvigorate the Ultima Online experience of having no boundaries and no set paths for players. And what they really actually started to focus on with that game was the social interactions. So they figured out, okay, we have this world and we actually have a lot of players in the world. So could we actually design gameplay systems that would incentivize people to not just work together, but have a really, really meaningful kind of place in the whole society. So they in introduced classes like uh, the entertainer that had no combat or crafting purpose, but their purpose was actually to interact with other people and kind of buff others and make sure that the combat and crafting people had everything they need in kind of their place in the society. Um, they really focus on player driven cities, so players would not just be able to own housing but own whole cities and they would be able to run for politicians to actually change how the cities would evolve over time. So what you had was this huge space, uh, empty space that players would fill, fill with their own houses, their own guilds, their own cities and basically their own stories, right? So it's all back to the idea of having the player 
make the choices for for themselves and actually come up with a story that best best suits them. And in the end, it, it became a pretty successful, um, I guess, virtual virtual environment. It's not so much like a set game, but it's more like an environment that people can interact with. So going back to Minecraft Frontiers, the big question for us is how do we deliver this rich social experience to other people through Minecraft? Because bear in mind, a lot of our players will never have experienced the old MMOs and have no idea how those uh, systems even work or how they, what they can even deliver, right? Uh, so they're used to these simple, straightforward, hard to fail experiences. Um, any any game you pick up in the last two to three four years, um, usually it's really easy to finish, right? And it's hard to actually fail and feel like you made an impactful decision. So we're trying to kind of change that by sticking to three of our pillars. So the first pillar is meaningful world. So what we really care about is creating a world and a universe that's meaningful to our players. Um, so what we do is we actually create smaller islands, handcrafted pieces of land that are there only once, so we don't have any generation of land or any instancing. Uh, we just have an island that you share with other people. And what we hope this achieves is actually people have to interact with each other and they bump into each other quite a lot. And when you find something on the island, it's there only once and it should kind of give you a sense of ownership because you kind of own a piece of land that other people constantly interact with as opposed to just having a randomly generated huge patch of land that's only yours that nobody actually cares about or visits so what we really care about is having a non-instanced um, really really good looking piece of land that people can call their own and actually interact with on a daily basis the second pillar is community, so what we really care about is people having some kind of a role in the world. So instead of you having your own personal journey that's um, kind of a clone of everybody else's, we care about you building your own story and your own kind of um, responsibility to, to others. So instead of um, people being able to like rule the whole world on their own, what we really care about is people interacting with each other to kind of achieve common goals. So we have a lot of gameplay systems that encourage this. So the warriors and crafters have to work together to create the best weapons, uh, but they also need the politicians, the explorers, the people who understand the law and who like to talk to the NPCs. So all of these different player styles come together to actually um, I guess achieve what they want to achieve in, in that environment, right? And you will not be able to usually achieve those things on your own. You'll need to rely on other people and kind of build your own reputation. So what we see happening and what we want to see happening is players having a reputation with others and you knowing, okay, this uh, guy or girl, they're, they're really good at crafting this type of item, so I, I should go to them instead of trying to do it on my own. And instead I can focus maybe on just like trading, which is what I like the most, right? And if I like um, maybe be killing bosses the most then I can just do that and rely on others to provide me with the services that I need to achieve those goals. And finally the last pillar is progression. So what we care about is the experience changing over time and you feeling like you have experienced the changes. So we want you to be able to you know go on a holiday for two months and come back and the world being in a very very different shape to what you experienced before. And what we hope this achieves is gives you this sense of like belonging because you've experienced all of these changes over time and you'll be able to tell your friend actually I was here when the bandits attacked the city and we, we perhaps failed the defense and now we're missing half of the city, right? And the new player will be like, wow, uh, you experienced all of these things and uh, they will not even realize that over time they accumulate this kind of sense of, um, I guess, a pool of memories, right? That you share with uh, other people and with the environment itself. So what we try to achieve is having an ever-changing experience that's never boring because it's always different, but it's also kind of uh, unique to you at that given time. So taking all of these pillars and a team of about 20 people, what we're trying to do is um, create a brand new experience that we would share with others. And I think it's gonna be really unique and revolutionary in the Minecraft space because a lot of other servers, their inspiration is uh, Minecraft and Minecraft servers. For us, the inspiration is not so much other Minecraft servers, but other games and kinds of uh, kind of forms of roleplay that we experience over time that we want to share with others today. Um, so I think this is going to be really, really unique and it's going to hopefully inspire a lot of people to create their own stories in the world that we create for them. If you have any questions or comments or just love RPGs and want to let us know, make sure to drop by our Discord. We're always super happy to talk to others or listen to ideas. Um, the experience is coming together really quickly and hopefully we are going to share it with you just in a few months and we can all have fun in Alpera together.